Hello, and welcome to Talk Junkie. This is Justin Perkins. Um, I want to thank everybody ahead of time uh, for downloading and listening and sending me emails and things like that. Like It's not like it's a ton of people, uh, but the downloads are really good, and the listens and stuff, according to the Spreaker app, <clears throat> it's enough people that I can justify keep doing it, and I really love doing it. So um, I worry, like, I try to schedule some of these out to where they release at certain times. Uh, I worry if I don't release one, there won't be enough content. And I, I worry that I give too much content because, I, I mean, I record a lot. And sometimes I don't even release them. I just record them because I enjoy doing it. And, you know, if I've got free time, just a couple minutes here and there to do one, sometimes you'll hear cuts where I have to cut in between them and back and forth. But it is fun to do. And if you're only listening to this on iTunes... Uh, at least uh, give it a rating and, and a like, and please subscribe on iTunes. That way it, it tells you every time one pops up, because I do a lot. Uh, but really, give it a rating, because, you know, uh, it's just neat. It's neat for me to get to see that. Um, but if you're listening on iTunes, you can also listen to it on YouTube. Um, Jay Perkins is the, it's me holding the microphone. It's a guy holding the microphone with a little bit of a red background. Uh, that's the picture. If you're looking for it on YouTube, um, please like, subscribe, and comment there. Vice versa. Either way you want to do it. Um, I'd like to get the viewers up on that. Um, I don't know. There, I think there may be some weird stuff going on with YouTube. I'm not sure yet. Um, I have apps that are telling me that some of my downloads and listens are coming from YouTube, and YouTube doesn't show anything. And I have people saying, hey... You know, I watch and listen here, so I don't know. But if you can, like, subscribe anywhere you can. Um, Have you ever heard the expression, blood is thicker than water? Oil is thicker than water, too. I, I I don't know what that value, that statement has. I know what it's supposed to mean. Blood is thicker than water, you know, is in reference to... Um the bond that people of uh, relation have to one another. Um, A lot of people feel like your blood relatives, people within a certain degree of separation from you genetically, uh, be it brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, children, aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins. And everybody has a different definition of, of where that line is where that stops first cousin second cousin third cousin some people would say it you know it it stops outside of the mother and father and grandparents or aunts and uncles you know everyone has a different perspective on that everyone also has a a different perspective i guess on on what makes people family um you know there's there's generic answers it's it's uh you know there's tons of them you know People, your friends can be family, this and that. But really at the heart of the issue, people feel like if you're blood related, you know, if that's your mother, brother, father, sister, aunt, uncle, cousin, whatever, you understand the, 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 the format we're working with. If that's family, then that's something special. That's something above the norm. I'll concede to that to some degree. Um, the feeling you have for your parents, um, there's really possibly no feeling like that until you have a brother or sister or sibling. Then those two may equal that. It's it's pretty tight. Uh, then you. Then you you have kids, and nothing nothing's close to that. But there's there's a problem there because for me, the person I'm married and had the kids with, um, you know, I, I can't explain the level of of attachment that's there. And there's no blood relation. At least I hope not. We you know. Uh, I've I've heard the comments before. You are from Eastern Kentucky, so it's possible. I don't know. We're not from Tennessee, though. Come on. 
Um, just that's just a joke. Uh, but you know, I'm not blood related to my wife. You know, and then I technically have a daughter that I'm not blood related to, but there's no difference in her and my son. You know, I I, I don't I don't know. Um, in my opinion, the phrase "blood is thicker than water" is a useless statement. Uh, people have a belief structure that there is a value and a specialness to people who are blood related to you over other people. Um, I think that's a ridiculous, ridiculous statement. To be completely honest with you, I think it's one of the most asinine things I've ever heard. Uh, I don't know if that's a bad enough word that I have to put that on the disclaimer, but um, it's it's ridiculous. It's it's a it's an ignorant, ignorant thought process that I don't understand. Um, I, I, there could be reasons why I don't understand it. I'm a, I'm a stepchild. Uh, I had my mother and father. I uh, had them through, throughout my life. Um, my stepmother is an amazing woman who I love. Um, and my mother is an amazing woman who I love. You know, I love my mother like sh- you love your mother. There is a difference there than there is with my stepmother. But I still love my stepmother. There's still a bond there that has nothing to do with blood whatsoever. It, it doesn't, you know, I mean, it's the blood thicker than water thing doesn't work for that. And then, you know, my mother's been married uh, twice since my father. Uh, my first stepdad was my best friend for a long time and, and, and a really important part of my life. Um, and I may have disagreed with things about him, but, you know, still, I, you know, um, he had two kids who were my stepbrother and stepsister. I had a full-blooded brother at that point in time. That's all I had at that point in time, until I got them. Um, I don't love my full-blooded brother any more than I love my stepbrother. Um, I I loved my stepbrother just as much as, or love him just as much as I, I I did my my full brother. Same with my stepsister. They're they're very important people to me. They're not blood. Um. Later, my mother remarried to a wonderful man whose family has taken us in as, you know, took, taken us in as part of their family. You know, and I'm older and I have kids and they've treated my kids wonderfully. And he's a, a wonderful man who's who's great to us. And I, I care a lot about him. And, and he's a, a really good man. And he's not my biological father. I, I love my biological father. I love them in a different way of each other. When my father married my stepmother... We had a little stepsister then, and by this point, my brother and I, um, the full brother, were older. And, and here's this little girl who's actually just a year older than my stepdaughter, who I got a year later. Um, and we loved her. I mean, we were crazy about her, and I didn't love her any less than I did my full-blooded brother or my stepsister or my stepbrother. I just loved her. And then now we have the youngest. My half brother, and the same goes for him. I love him just like I did the rest of them. You know, there's there's no difference. And with him, it's the first time in that sibling thing that a blood tie has been brought back into. Then I had my daughter, and that changed my life completely. And married my wife, and those became the two most important human beings on this planet to me. And. There was no blood relation to either one. Now I have my son, and he's my full-blooded son, but there's no difference between him and my daughter. And him and my daughter and my wife are at a level that um, other people, you know, couldn't get to, you know. And they're they're full. They're, two of those people have no blood relation to me whatsoever. Uh, my nieces and nephews on, on my wife's side, they have no relation to me. You know, a blood relation to me. Now, my nephew on my brother's side, I, 
I guess he does technically have a blood relationship with me, but I don't love him any more or any less than I do the other nieces and nephews. You know, it's it's a long, convoluted thing, you know, because the topic I want to talk about today is, <clears throat> um, it, it is a complicated one for some people. It's not for me, but for some people it's a very complicated issue. Um when when you have family like my my grandfather on my mother's side my grandfather on my father's side passed away when i was younger and uh, i've heard nothing but amazing things about him and the memories i have of him are uh of fond memories i remember happiness and that's about it but i i was very close with my grandfather on my mother's side and and throughout most of my life was with him um I was closer to him before my wife and daughter and son than I was anybody, even my siblings. He and I just had a bond that um, I've never been able to duplicate. That's not because he was blood family. It's because I loved him and he loved me. See, he was his wife, my grandmother, was quite the opposite. I had no bond with her. And and after he passed away, I realized um, that a couple people in, in our family on that side were not good for me, were not what I needed. They were very toxic people. Traditional wisdom says that blood is thicker than water and, and, and that blood relationship is important. And, you know, you should always take the time to try to heal and, and fix relationships. And I, I believe you should. But a relationship doesn't deserve any more fixing just because it's blood than it does anything else. Um, some of the people I'm closest to in my life have no blood relationship to me. Relationships are about people. They're about each individual person and how those people interact with each other, treat each other, and feel about each other. That's what has value in a relationship. Family or not family does not have value in, in a relationship. If we go farther, far enough down the bloodline, we're all related. Regardless of race, color, creed, religion, some way, shape, or form, uh, regardless of whether you're religious and believe in Adam and Eve or you're an evolutionist and you believe in evolution, either way we come from the same starting point. Same race. The human race. Same people. The fact that we just have a closer contact biologically to some person throughout the timeline than the others, I don't see where that holds any significant value. Life has showed me that People are important, very, very, very important, but what's important is that you have the right people around you, and what's not important is how close the biological relation is between you and that person. Toxic people are dangerous, regardless of if they're strangers or they're family. Toxic people eat you alive. They eat at the foundation of the relationship you have with them, the relationship you have with other people, and they eat at the foundation of good that's inside of you. Toxic people will drag you down and make you toxic. And I have a very simple process. I eliminate toxic people, regardless of of blood relation. That means absolutely nothing. That's something my grandfather taught me. Life's about loyalty. Not in the sense of some mafia movie or or anything of that nature. I'm loyal to the people I love. I'm loyal to the people that I care about, the people that are good to me. And in turn, those people are almost always loyal to you. Loyalty encompasses a large, vast, many of things to many different people. 
But I've got friends that other people just don't like. And if you talk about those friends in front of me, I'm going to defend them. There's people in my life that have done maybe bad things, maybe bad people, I don't know. But I defend them because they are good to me and treat me right. Now, I don't defend them at all costs. If they've done something horrible they've done, then you openly admit. I'm talking about on a level of being good people and being good to you. And you be good back. And you defend them when the opportunity arises, when you need to. You can point out mistakes that people make to them. You you can not always agree with someone and still be loyal. But someone that's toxic doesn't have the ability the ability to be loyal. They don't have the ability to contribute to you positively. They don't have the ability to be a meaningful part of your life. And if if people have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that is bad for them, that is damaging for them, is not conducive to a happy relationship for them, then people will tell you to leave them. You understand? It's not... It's not looked at as a negative or bad thing to leave someone who is detrimental to you. Now, in in history, uh, if you were a, a, a woman, especially for a long time, but even a man at times, you know, especially more prudish times, if if you were with a woman or a man who was very detrimental to you, but the option was divorce, yeah, they preferred you stay together. They preferred you be miserable and have a bad life than get a divorce. That was society. And, and those things have changed, and they've changed for the better. But it's nothing for someone to say, you're dating so-and-so and they're bad to you, then leave them. It's nothing for someone to say, oh, that's your friend? Well, they've done horrible things to you, and they've hurt you. Or maybe they've just slightly wronged you. Then you know you should cut them loose. But I, on the same hand, look at people whose mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, sisters, do them, do to them horrible things and treat them with no respect and no care whatsoever. And I hear the same thing over and over again. Well, that's family. It's different when it's family. You know, you got to try a little bit harder when it's family. You know, that's your, that's your brother. You know, that that's your brother. That's that's your father. That's your mother. You know, that's your uncle. It's different. I mean, that's 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 your sibling. That means that at least one, if not both, of your parents were part of of procreation in forming both of you. Now granted, my science is hazy on this. We're probably looking at next to mother and father and siblings. That's the tightest unit you can get, I would have to assume, genetically. If if we looked at this and we said, you've got cancer, and this cancer came from an outside source, this cancer comes from somewhere else, this cancer may not kill you, but it will reduce your quality of life. And if you cut that cancer off, it will be socially acceptable and nobody will say a thing. But you've also got this other cancer. It's about the same level of damage, but the thing is, emotionally, this cancer hurts even even worse. It actually has an emotional, even worse emotional. But this 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 cancer is genetically similar to you in makeup and, and comes from your family line. 
So you could cut this cancer out, but people would look down upon you. Now that seems like a drastic, drastic statement and a drastic comparison to compare a family member who who is quote a toxic family member to cancer. But if we're not talking about life and death, if we're just talking about quality of life, it's not that drastic. You see, but if if it was somebody of no blood relation that was that damaging and and that that uh, that bad for you, it's never a second thought to cut them loose. But if they're blood, if they're blood, you should try harder. You should work harder. You should do more. I I don't subscribe to that at all. Uh, I feel it's ridiculous. And I feel it's horrible, horrible advice. Very invaluable advice. I would say that you treat everyone like they have value, purpose, and you try to give them some value in return. Life's going to shake out to where you're close to some of those people, and some of those people matter in your life. Life's going to shake out to where some of those people, it's not that they don't matter, it's that they're just not a part of your life, and it's going to shake out that some of those people, some of those people are too selfish, too arrogant, too self-centered, and too pathetic to be of any benefit to you. And it's going to work out some of those people are are of no genetic circumstance whatsoever as far as relation goes. It's also going to work out that some of them are very close to you. And then you're left with only two trains of thought. The one I hear over and over and over again, that's family, you make that work. There's no sense in them being fighting, you make that work. I'm not talking about a simple disagreement. I'm not talking about a complex disagreement. I'm talking about people who do nothing but take, people who do nothing but grind away at kindness, who dig in and cut away at any type of humanity just to get what they want, to be selfish, to be self-centered. People who who will do anything, including hurting family, to benefit themselves. Those are toxic people. Those are people who not only do they affect you negatively when they're around you, but they affect everyone negatively when they're around. And their negativity spreads, and and it just takes over anything that's allowed to contact it for too long. I cut those people off with no regret, no remorse. That that's a hard, a hard thing to do. It's it's a hard situation to wrap your head around and you know my son has had when they originally diagnosed him they call it Asperger's they call it high functioning now and then then they said he didn't have it I, d- I don't know you know we're, we're at a standstill then. but my wife and I looked into a lot of things when when, when we were finding all this out about my son. And, and one of our concerns was, uh, through all the many different issues he could have, uh, we hadn't got a diagnosis yet, and this is before we got the mixed diagnosis. We were worried about his ability to be compassionate and loving and caring. And that was quickly taken out of our mind because he's a very loving, very sweet child. Yeah, but we we started looking at symptoms and and various things, and my wife concluded in in her uh, medical opinion, her professional medical opinion, she's not a doctor. That I very much autistic, and, and I can see the the things that she sees. One thing though that upon reading and looking at how other people probably take me is that I'm not very I'm not very emotional in certain ways and I'm overly emotional in other ways two fairly close members of my family 
wronged my mother and myself and the rest of my family in a way that I found unforgivable. I was able to completely write those people off, completely disregard their existence. No no pain, no sadness, um, nothing. They just no longer exist. Uh, I, I told one of them um, the last time I spoke to him, for all intents and purposes, from this moment on, you are dead to me. You, you do not exist to me. And they didn't, even up to their death. Uh, I didn't go to the funeral. They were already dead. They died years ago. Uh, uh, the, the, they died just a couple of days after I buried my grandfather, uh, showing him no respect and, and, and acting in a way that was very disrespectful to him and, and his daughter. I never struggled with that issue. I don't struggle with it now. My son doesn't even know who that person is. Doesn't remember him enough. Doesn't care. It's never been mentioned, never brought up. I don't have pictures. Now, the other person followed suit and done the same thing as the first person, and I feel the same way about them now. Through the entirety of their life, from here, from that point forward, they will not exist to me. I'm told that that I have a lack of compassion, maybe, there. But quite to the contrary, if if you know me in any way, I'm a uh, overly loving, overly emotional person. Um, e- anything involving a kid can make me cry in the drop of a hat. Uh, anything involving uh, kids and parents and these welcome home videos for these soldiers... I'm a very emotional person, a very loving person. When I care about you, I care about you to a degree and to an extent that um, I feel is appropriate and um, extremely, extremely um, strong. Um, I don't know how else to say it. Now, I was given much advice throughout this time that this was going on because there was a in the family there was an issue that uh, ended up becoming public and another trait of mine is I, I don't I don't particularly care what people who are ignorant to a situation or people who are misinformed or people who I don't know, think about me. Now, if if I hold a deep, deep respect for you and something has caused you to think of me a certain way that I feel is inaccurate, that bothers me and I do care what you think. And that list of people is fairly limited uh, because I think it should be because society doesn't work that way. If we just worry about what everybody thinks, if anybody worries about what everybody thinks, that becomes detrimental to them and they can't do good and be good and and even if they have done something wrong, they don't have the ability to change uh, because they can't make progress because they're debilitated by the the fear of worrying about what other people think. But I have this ability to, to really not care. Apparently, when people say that, they're not being truthful and I, I did not know that and um, it's point that it possibly could be a part of the autism. I, I don't know. I don't particularly know enough about this and, and don't in all honesty believe I have it, but it's been expressed to me now by more than one person. But I do have this ability to not care your opinion on me. I don't overvalue myself. I'm not arrogant. I, I'm not stuck up. Not, I'm a very humble person. I believe that humility and, and honor and and, and Trying to be a good person are the most important parts of life. But humility is is up there. But I do not need approval. Um, my my, I, It was explained to me one way once, and, you know, I, I look at it like this. A lot of things in my life were not perfect, and I've had things that didn't happen. My, my parents loved me. Um, 
I talked a lot as a kid. I got plenty of attention um, to the degree that I, I, I guess I put a value on the opinion of people's opinions I value. But if I don't know them, I don't. And it's an issue with toxic people that they go behind your back and say horrible things and do horrible things and try to break you down to other people because they need to build themselves up. A toxic person will speak your name more than their own because they need... They, there can be no no alluding to someone. It, 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 be, they have to be very specific about you. They have to speak on you constantly because they need to validate why you're a bad person, why you're wrong. And that's what a toxic person does. The problem is when you allow those people to stay in your lives, when you allow them to be right there with you, doing that behind your back just because they're blood, just because they're family. I know people who were adopted whose family and love is just as strong as families who are completely blood related. My family is a mix, is a blend. I've got stepbrother and stepsister from a marriage that's been over for a long time on one side and a and, and a, a stepsister and a half brother on the other side and then a full brother in the middle with me and and, and I have a stepmom and a mom and a stepdad and a dad and an ex stepdad and my family is this patchwork. I have a stepdaughter, I have a full blooded son, I have a wife. My life is a patchwork of these different people who biologically have no mark or no link, no way to form any connection outside of this one person in the middle. So you are the connection. You are what's thicker than water. And it's those people that have value to you. Those people who give as much to you as you give to them. Who take only what's needed. Who you do not take advantage of. That's what's thicker than blood. And toxic people, they dilute everything. They dilute blood. They dilute oil. They dilute water. They dilute all. Then they infect it. You do not have to tolerate bad, toxic people. Just because you share the last name, or you share a family member, or what, whatever the case may be. You have the right to eliminate anyone from your life. And you don't have to do it in a hateful, mean way. You don't have to do it in a vindictive way. You don't have to do it in an abusive way. You have to do it in a way that's positive for you and gives you the right outcome. And you do not have to accept guilt. You do not have to accept blame. When someone says, Ah, but that's your grandmother. Ah, but that's your mother. Ah, but that's your father. Ah, but that's your brother. You do not have to accept that guilt. You don't have to accept that blame. The expression, I prefer this expression far better than blood is thicker than water. You made your bed, now you must lie in it. They made those beds. Let them lie in them. It's not hard. I mean, we say that it is and we treat it like it is, but that's that's being false and that's being fake. We're allowing society to pin us down and force us to believe something. It's not that hard. I have done it many times. I've done it with friends. And you say that's different. I say a friend has as much value as a family member. Look, there's no denying the level of connection you have to a a son or a daughter. There's no denying the level of connection you have to a father or mother. But can you tell me that there's a difference in the connection that you have between a husband or a wife? A stepsister or a stepbrother? Of a stepson or a stepdaughter? You mean to tell me that those people can't hold as important and equal a place in your life as people of blood do just because they're blood? 
I feel sorry for you if that's the case. But if that is the case, that, that these people are equal, that my wife can be equal to my mother, my father, my brother, everyone except my kids. My kids do feel, but one kid's not blood, and she's just as valuable. It's equal between her and my son. If that's possible then that means that the blood aspect doesn't matter. What matters is the people that were most important in my life. So if that's what matters, then cutting loose somebody who was blood, that someone that was blood, that that is toxic, that has no positive aspect in their relation to you in your life, Someone that is like a cancer. I would rather drop that person. I would rather extinguish them from my life. Remove them. And replace them with someone of value. Replace them with a good friend. I just don't understand certain things about people. I don't understand this outcry. And let me tell you, you never get this outcry from people who have suffered what my family has suffered. People who have dealt with a family member, a close family member, that can be evil on a level unparalleled and unrivaled. People who, who have had to deal with that see things differently. And and. So maybe if if you do disagree and you think that it's worth trying to fix just because it's blood, if that's the case, then I'm happy for you because maybe that means, maybe that means you had something better than I had. And that's a good thing. Because I, being happy for others is imperative in regards to your personal happiness. You have to learn to be happy for others. So I'm happy for you if you've done that. And if you judge me for saying that you can cut off people, that's okay. I don't need to approve your opinion for it to be valid to you, and I don't need to approve your opinion for my own sake. I disagree. And I don't care that you think poorly of me or you think differently of me. If I had it to do over again today, I would cut those same people off. No regrets. It simply was what was best for myself and my family. Because my family consists of people, blood and not blood related, who hold great value in my life and bring great value to my life. People who I strive to bring value to their life. And anyone who doesn't bring value into my life and actually purposely tries to take value away from my life. I warn you ahead of time, it doesn't matter how closely related you are to me. I am done with you. Someone told me when we had this conversation once that that was the most negative outlook they'd ever heard. We talked a little while longer. And then they made a, in my opinion, a gross misstep. They said the world wouldn't be half as bad a place if we all loved each other, if we all tried to do better, if we all tried to work harder to get along and be better. And I said, well, to me, the way to make the world a better place is to appreciate people, to love people, treat people good based on the good that they bring based on the positivity that they bring based on the value that they have in your life and you have in their life not based on genetics we are closer to our mothers, fathers, brothers and sisters because we're there we experience life together We're nurtured and taken care of by them. 
But there's people raised by people who are not their blood parents, but they have a connection just as equal as I have to my blood parents because they were taken care of. It was the nurturing. It was the relationship. The relationship is what matters, not the blood. If you have toxic people in your life, cut them loose. It's simple. It seems like it's hard. But I promise you, the way it will make you feel, it, it's, it's not a mean or vindictive thing. Taking care of yourself is not being mean or vindictive. And it doesn't have to be a family member. Most of the time, it's not. Most of the time, just due to the sheer number of non-family members we meet, it's a non-family member. But remember, no matter who they are, in relation to you, if they're toxic, cut them out. Um, my books are not toxic. They may not be the best books you've ever read, but they most definitely are not toxic. Um, the Red Spotted Newt, R-E-A-D, The Red Spotted Newt in Hazard, Kentucky, is now open. Uh, if you want to get my books locally, that is the only place you can get them. Uh, the poetry book, Cold Kingdom, is available there. Unless they've sold out, and let's hope they have. Um, the children's book I've done with my son, Everyone's Different Just Like Me, is available there. Uh, the Boy of Super Hearing, the other children's book, is available there. Um, if for some reason, I'm sorry I had a disruption there, so I don't know exactly where I took off from. If for some reason you cannot get it local, you live way away from here, and you can't go to the Red Spot and Neuter, go shop at a local store, then you can get my books on Amazon. They are available for Amazon Prime, free shipping, all of those grandiose, wonderful things. Uh, they were currently on sale, but they will be going back up, and once they do, the Red Spot and Neuter will be the cheapest place to get those. Uh, it's equal right now, um, but it will be cheaper. Um, thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for uh, participating in this. It's fun. Uh, I enjoy doing it. Um, I enjoy the interaction. Um, you guys have a great day.